into prayer. Amen. If you can bow your head, heads and your hearts as we open up our hearts to God eternal and all wise God. We come to you in the matchless name of Jesus. God, just to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for holding us, God. Thank you for allowing us to be where you are, God. We welcome you, God, because we want to be in your presence, God. We welcome you, God, because we love you today. We want to let you know that we love you, God, in the matchless name of Jesus. God, we thank you so much for blessing this service ahead of time, God. And we thank you so much for what you're about to do, God. So in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for our pastor and we thank you for our first lady as they are getting preparing and they are getting restoration period for just on vacation, God, because they need it, God. But I also want you to touch the preacher of the hour, God. Touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. From the inside to the outside and outside to the inside, God. Use them in the name of Jesus, God. We give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory because just because of who you are, God, and because we want to be where you are. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Hemingway. Here are a few things we want to share with you. All young adults, the place to be is the Blueprint Bible Study every Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please watch Really Love on Netflix. We will be discussing it this Tuesday. Stay connected by texting Blueprint to 301-895-9556. Join us on Wednesdays at 12 noon for Bible study. Get the midday touch you need. All youth, join us Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for Word on the Street Bible study. For the passcodes to access either Bible study, email us at connect at HemingwayMemorialAME.org all links can be found on our website at HemingwayMemorialAME.org. This Sunday is Communion Sunday. Reverend Dr. Phyllis Ramsey will be preaching our 9 a.m. service on Zoom. Reverend Charles Fowler III will be preaching our 10 a.m. service on Facebook and YouTube. Pastor will conduct communion for both services. Thanks for watching, and now let's continue on with our service. And it is now, it is giving time, y'all. It is giving time. You know what? I, I get excited about giving to Christ. I get excited about the fact that I have an opportunity to just give what God has given, a portion of what God has given to me. And let me tell you, it says it's pressed down and running over. And so what I say, you know, you can give by PayPal, you can give by Cash App, you can give by Givelify, you can give by the postal service if you need to put it in the mail, or even come on the side of the church on, on Blazer Drive and put it in the slot. But I tell you, God says, give a tenth. He just, he didn't ask for it all, even though it all belongs to him. He says, if you just give a little bit, give him 10%. That's all he's asking for us, to tithe. And it's not just money. So if you don't have the money to give to him, but you can give also 10% of your time, amen? Because that's something that God asks of us as well, that we give a part of us to him because we don't even belong to ourselves, amen? So let's, let's pray over the offering. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give. God, I ask that you bless the givers and those who do not have to give. I, I say that because, you know, God, somebody's in a predicament right now, but I said you bless them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, bless the offering, bless those who gave and who has who don't have to give and have a want to, or, or have want to give, God. Just give what you, we just do what you do best and bless everybody. God, meet the needs of your people and we'll be so careful to give your name, the honor, the praise and the glory. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. There's a voice that cries out in the silence. He's searching for a heart that will love him. Longing for a child that will give them their all, give it all, he wants it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth, he's searching for a heart that will love him. Longing for a child that will give them their all, give it all, he wants it all. 
wants it all and he said love me love me with your whole heart he wants it all today serve me serve me with your life now he wants it all today bow down let go of your idols he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all and there's a god that walks over the earth he's searching for a heart that is desperate longing for a child that will give him their all give it all he wants it all and he says love me love me with your whole heart he wants it all today serve me serve me with your life now he wants it all today bow down let go of your idols he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all today he wants it all to everyone, uh, to uh, Pastor Folsom, to First Lady Folsom, to the Dixon and the Stewarts, to Brother Mitchell and the trustees, to the ministerial staff, and everyone assembled, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm not going to be before you long, and so if you have your Bible, you meet me in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 22. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when the evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the, fourth, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out of fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. Do not be afraid, it is I. And Peter answered him saying, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. 
Then those who were in the boat came and worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. I wanna talk for the next 10 or so minutes on the subject, get out of the boat. This passage of scripture demonstrates to us that with fear, with, that with faith, God, with faith in God, all things are possible. Oftentimes we allow our fears to overcome our faith. We have opportunities to do great and exciting things in our lives. And sometimes these things seem uh, impossible. And when God plants these ideas that honestly make little sense, our fears will cause us to stay where we are instead of exercising our faith. In the text, we find Jesus and his disciples coming from the miracle of feeding the 5,000. Jesus sent the disciples out in the boat while he went up to the mountain to pray alone. Now the disciples find themselves in the middle of the sea Waves and wind are tossing the boat. Then during this, Jesus appears to them on the water and scares them. It's somewhere around three or four in the morning and they believe it is a ghost. Jesus speaks to them saying, it is I, do not be afraid. But this was not enough for Peter. He said, if it's really you, tell me to come out to you on the water. I'm not sure what led Peter to suggest getting out of the boat. Peter was a fisherman. He, he was accustomed to being on the water in a boat. It is not human nature for a person to be in a boat on the water in the middle of a storm and believe it's a good idea to get out of the boat. Much like Peter, we find ourselves contemplating visions, goals, businesses, projects, ministries, and ideas in our minds, some of our own imaginations, others from inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Former president of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, once said that if your visions and goals do not scare you, they aren't big enough. Do your goals scare you? Does where you want to be seem too big to accomplish? Does the pastor's vision for the church scare you? Does getting to Hill Road seem impossible? In these situations, we fail called or led to do these things that seem impossible or make no sense, it requires us to step out on faith and get out of the boat. From this text, we can take away these three things to remember when preparing to get out of the boat. First thing to remember is that it's always best to be wherever Jesus is. The only part about Peter wanting to get out of the boat that made physical sense is wanting to be closer to Jesus. Whatever we must do to get in line with where God is and where he wants us to be, we must do. It usually requires a renewing of the mind, a change in how we think, a change in what is most important to us. We cannot be as concerned with what we need as we and want as much as we must consider what those who do not look like us and dress like us and think like us need to gain a relationship with God and the church. Secondly, when preparing to get out of the boat, we must understand that sometimes everyone will not get out of the boat. In Peter's case, he was the only one to get out of the boat. We are all in different phases in our faith, and that is normal. It's not easy to leave the relative comfort of a boat to walk on water. It's not easy to change our habits. It's not easy to quit a secure job to start your own business. It's not easy to start ministries from scratch. It's not easy to meet people where they are, sometimes at your own expense. You cannot allow those who are not ready to get out of the boat to stop you. What God has for you is for you. Do not let fear of walking alone stop you. Step out on faith believing that if God called you to it, he will bring you through it. Lastly, getting out of the boat will be uncomfortable, but keep your focus on the one who called you out of the boat. When we step out on faith, we will encounter difficulty and discouragement. The road will not be easy. When you are trying to secure funding 
or space to start your business, it may look impossible. Participants to start your ministry may be hard to find initially, but if you have your business plan in order and get out of the boat, if your ministry's focus is about building the kingdom and get out of the boat, if members from all generations can sit down and discover what they have in common, God will make a way for the impossible to be a reality. This is where Peter finds himself walking on the water and the storm causes him to shift his attention away from Jesus. No matter the problems you see, keep the faith and focus on Jesus. Don't be discouraged when people turn you down. If God called you to it in God's time, you'll hear your yes. Do not be distracted by what others come to church wearing. When you focus on that, you're not focused on Jesus. What happened to Peter when he took his eyes off Jesus? The Bible says he began to sink. The good news is that even when Peter's faith wavered, he knew who to call to save him. He called the one who called him out of the boat. I'm glad I can call on Jesus when I'm in trouble and he will reach down and pull me up. Get out of the boat, but don't let fear and doubt take your attention and cause you to sink. Get out of the boat, but don't let hypocrisy and judgment take your attention off Jesus and cause the church to sink. Get out of the boat and look to Jesus. He's willing to help you. He's willing to save you. Jesus can carry you through. I've seen the lightning flashing, and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my sir, but I heard the voice of Jesus stay still to fight on because he promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. Be not dismayed, whatever be tired. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Good morning, get out of the boat. Amen. Whew. How can you come behind that but just say thank you jesus that's it just say jesus that's it ain't much more to say but say jesus that's it i'm going to close it out with prayer i ask everybody to bow their hearts first don't miss this opportunity this is your opportunity it doesn't matter where you are in life the same way he used peter and john he wants to use you so I'm gonna give you a few more minutes just to say it's me. And our ministers will contact you, our stewards, our leadership here will contact you and pray with you. But don't let this opportunity leave you today. I don't care what your circumstances are or what you've been through. Don't let this opportunity pass you today. Father God, we come before you today saying thank you for the mighty word that you bestowed upon us today. Father God, right now we ask for restoration back into our minister, oh Father God, that poured out his soul for you today, oh Father God. Father God, we ask not only that ears heard, but there be doers today, oh Father God. Father God, we ask that there be more Peters and Johns than you, oh Father God. Father God, right now we bless this house, the man of this house and the first lady of this house, Father God, and the leadership, Father God. Father God, right now we ask that you continue, God, to let this ministry move today, Father God, for those that's coming back to watch it later, oh Father God. Father God, for anybody that's wrestling or hesitant, God, we ask that you arrest that spirit today, oh Father God. God, right now we ask that you arrest them, God. Father God, anybody out there that needs healing, God, you are the healer of all healer, God. All you have to say is, I believe, God, because you died and you died with 37 strikes for it to heal us, Father God, from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet, oh Father God. So anybody out there need healing today, just say, God, it's me. It's me. It's me, because God is ready to meet that healing. The healing of your organs, the healing of your blood, the healing of cancer to be removed, the healing of diabetes to be removed. I just hear God say diabetes, cancer, arthritis, psychiatric pain, everything be removed. Just say, it's me. God is ready to heal you today. And God, we just thank you for the powerful word, God. 
we leave out your breath. We leave out this place, but never out your presence, oh, Father God. And in your precious son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All things are possible with Jesus Christ. Do you agree? Do you agree? All things are possible with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you've done, when you did it, where you were, or what you were thinking. He still loves you. He still wants you for himself. All things are possible. He can save you too, because I know he saved me, and that was a big deal. So I want to <laughs> just share this word with you. All things are possible. All things.